Hello and we're installing NixOS in a virtual machine for now. I want to try it out and see what the, all the hype is all about and how does it work. So first, I just opened up the browser and then I want to visit the website first. Now, mind you, I actually did not watch any tutorials, anything, like nothing at all. I'm going in blind on this one. So I just went into the website and the obvious choice was the downloads. And when I clicked on it, I saw a link like this. And this was the package manager. After I scrolled down a bit, then I saw the ISO. So uh, I just thought between, okay, so there's a minimalized, so there is a graphical ISO. So I couldn't decide on what to take. And I did have an understanding from my Artinax installs is that the graphical ISO will basically just give me a Plasma desktop environment to work off of. Now, at this point, I thought that this will install the Plasma desktop itself. So it will just install KDE. And I thought that that was the option. But in a few minutes, you'll see that no, that was not the option at all. But I did uh, get this one as well as uh, the minimal as well. I did get both of them because on this video, I will just install of a GUI system but I will also do a hyperland configuration so if you like at least hyperland install on the next OS itself so if you are interested in watching that then subscribe to the channel also if you're new then also subscribe to the channel and if you do find this video uh, maybe helpful or maybe you find this insightful then please do leave a like on the video and here you can see I have the files downloaded and saved in this file right here now for this video I'll just go with the plasma desktop because well it's a GUI installer and it's pretty simple to follow along so if you are uh, guys at home are following along to this tutorial and you want to install the NixOS itself then here's how to do it. Now, I am getting installing this on a VM but I will set it the VM up as a kind of like a KVM so it does support UEF, UEFI system and every all of that shenanigans so I'll just select the ISO and then I'll just complete all of this up so I'll get back to you after I have configured it and I'll put it on the screen the configuration I went with. So there you go the VM is booted up and uh, the a fun fact about this that if I tried it to install on a BIOS system so basically a, a legacy system it really doesn't work well it needs a uefi system so that's a great thing to know and that's just uh wait for it to boot up and i think uh the graphical install is the like what this one at least the graphical installer is pretty well made uh, i'll show it to you in a bit so as soon as it boots up as you can see this is the installer this is the calamaris installer which is pretty typical for the kde system as again uh, also it is a live environment so in case you are not sure about installing it you can actually check it out uh through this live environment and as you can see like this is pretty straightforward and i would say that if you have a working brain and you can read uh this is a pretty simple installation and it's just a read for it and at this point this is the point where i realized is that well the plasma is just the desktop environment that live environment is booted on and it actually doesn't represent which desktop environment we want to install so it's pretty great and we get the choice of different types of desktop environments and i like budget the most because it has that mac-esque look and i'm too broke to buy a mac so let me have this anyway so we can we also have the choice of no desktop this is pretty great as i also try to like, do a no desktop and use a hyperland on it but it didn't really work out and i will really like like this is a great option which is like it tells you that it's nix OS is a pretty open source like it's an open source system but if you want to like have non-open source things so basically the proprietary software you have the option for that as well and for nvidia and um other like other different type of tools you actually need to enable this so make sure to do that and as for it is this, like i want to install in the whole race and make sure to change it i change the disks on the top so i'll show you that this right here make sure to change that for the correct drive and then we have the summary of the summary of the whole system this is weird let me make this smaller why is this so big that's what she said that's what she said that's what she said <laughs> anyway now if i just press install so now we just have to wait for it to install and when it's done installing we can move on to just get an overlook of how this works and as far as why i'm playing on next OS. So Nix is itself is a package manager of sorts. So when we are installing something with the I would say APT, Pacman, TNF, what we are doing is by default we are installing it onto our main system itself and every package uses other package dependencies and it can get pretty messy when we are trying to clear system up or when you are trying to maybe send the configuration to someone else who maybe likes your configuration and even for me example like if I do have a configured system and I would like some my friends to try it out then it gets a pretty weird because it is not very reproducible where uh, it may work in my system but when it, whenever i transfer it over it just breaks maybe some dependency is not installed in their system maybe something is not configured properly but next uh, being the packet quoted package manager it actually kind of isolates everything in its like uh, kind of like an, its own bubble 
So the dependencies and stuff do not really overlap with each other. And if you want to install something, it's not as easy as just you no. Know, for our example, we just type in sudo pacman dash s the package name and it just install it in your system globally. It has the well, way uh, it will first let you try it out. So we can actually try out application without actually installing it on our system itself. And when the, you're trying it out, you can check if the system if it's broken, maybe if it's safe, maybe if it's um even the application you want, you can actually we can actually check it out. Then there's the option where we can install it for that shell session. So not globally for that shell session itself or not shell like for that user at least. Uh, that's a way to install it and I'll, I'll show you this when I'm like goofing around in there. I'm talking about that in this section that's because well uh, it's installing and I don't I don't think you have some, anything better to do. So might as well learn about it while we're at it. And also if you are this far into the video subscribe and leave a like. Anyway so that makes this Nix OS like Nix package manager really great. Then we can install it globally. So when we'll confirm that yeah I want this on my system and i want to use it that is absolutely amazing then there is something where it actually gives a system like rollback option where if we rebuild the system let's say we added a bunch of packages onto our next configuration which again i will show you in a bit or uh, maybe i don't i forgot but anyway uh, if we use the next configuration and we configure it this will be like apparent when i do the hyperland video where we need to like really get in the weeds of the system when we're installing it i'll do a manual install on that one so we can actually we can actually learn about it while we install it. Now, as you uh, can tell, that uh, the package manager seems a lot complicated, and I would say that for like it's not beginner friendly. That that much I will like say. I, you cannot tell me anything to convince me that it's not beginner. It is beginner friendly. It's not beginner friendly. It's a bit hectic, and you do have to search around a bit and you know read a bunch of stuff. Uh, who likes that anyway? So, uh, it's not that great of a beginner of system, but I do understand the appeal where it's pretty safe. And once I get a configuration up and running, I can literally just send the Nix file to someone else and say, bro, just install it. You will get the exact system I have. Basically, just it will work on your system. Everything will work together. So, that's pretty handy. And I don't know why this installation takes a while. It takes a very long time. But again, also a bit of a spoiler, if we do a minimal install, so without the desktop environment, it does take a little bit less time so i would assume that since this is building apps like i think it just builds that from source where the pac manager just basically has kind of like an installation process it just installs it this builds the app so maybe that causes it to uh have a little bit of time and at this point it just locked up i don't know but it just locks up i thought i had to give it a password but just pressing enter works if it does happen to you just press enter and it will like, not do that <laughs> anyway so at this point i got a bit uh stressed out i thought maybe it's not installing maybe it's not doing anything but it was doing something and for some reason reason i was getting this same line over and over again i don't know why that happened so if any of you know why this is happening then please do let me know but uh it does install like it's not like it doesn't install it does install but what happens is that i get this same line over and over again which is now nah, i don't know pretty scary if you tell me but again most users will probably don't even check what's happening under the hood though that's pretty fine so like I was saying, uh, I want to do a hyper install on this since it is a pretty popular option. Obviously, again, full disclosure, I will do it in a virtual machine just to test it out, just to test the command out. And again, the benefit of uh, benefit of NixOS is that I can configure it in my hyper, like in my VM, like do everything I need to do. And then just copy over the Nix file, like Nix configuration over and do it on a system itself without having to energy install every packages I had. Uh, even the configuration, I can just copy it over without having to worry about okay did i install this or did i miss something like i don't have to worry about any of that so i am thinking about switching to next i am not 100 percent confirmed on that but i am thinking about it i do enjoy r more mostly mostly because it's pretty lightweight and again it has that flexibility in it where if you want to have a pretty simple system you want to install it as to have a running system it will give you the option but if you want to get into the really the weeds of the system and you want to configure everything manually it will also give you the system now i think NixOS does have almost something like that where it does give you the option to configure everything yourself uh, but I do recommend you not jumping in everything anyway uh, I'll like shut up for a bit I have been talking for a while and I'll just let it complete and then we can move on also I wanted to check out the NixOS manual but the thing about this is that there's a lot of reading that needs to be done and I do not like that much reading so and yet here it describes how what the package manager is and how it works it does say it's a declarative package manager and since 
once I opened it in the middle of the manual, it is kind of confusing. Like, I want, again, I do not pretend on this channel that I know everything. Obviously, I don't. And I do make mistakes, a lot of mistakes. But uh, this was pretty confusing to me because I didn't really understand what was going on. But uh, from the gist of it, what I understood that you can search packages and we can customize packages. We can, like, it's mostly based around the package manager itself. The main selling point of this is the package manager and its ability to isolate things. That's what I pulled out from this. And there you go. Uh, it is installed. It did take a lot of time, like more than I expected. It took almost like, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes, which is a lot for a system install. But again, I'm not blaming anything. Uh, and it does use system reboot. And I think there is a way to configure to have the grub loader. Uh, again, I'll do a manual install in the next video. Like I'll attempt it uh, in the next video. So please do stay tuned for that. And there you go. You can install. I think this is using light DM. Yes, since this is dipping, I think it's using light DM. And it's pretty straight forward just logging in and Oh, there you go. We have our system itself. And there you go. And why? I don't know why, but the uh, text is a bit wonky in the menu. So I went to the settings and let's see. We have appearances. Let's change it. So desktops uh, in here. I think this is the bottom menu. So let's change a few things. Let's see if we can change it. Okay, then the wallpaper. Okay, and uh, so it changes the icons and the wallpaper that's weird if i change this and okay it didn't work uh, i don't know what happened at this point it's like it wasn't letting me get into dark mode so it won't let me use dark mode so that was pretty weird of it as you can see the system is breaking and again i don't know maybe it's because i'm using it in a virtual machine maybe not but yeah i'm a bit confused on this and i tried a few different things i tried to like go to other settings maybe something else was like making it problematic uh, maybe I was missing something, but uh, no matter how I, how many times I looked, it was like nope, uh, it would not let me use dark mode. And at some point, I just gave up on dark mode and just said, you know what, never mind. I also rebooted the system a few times. As you can see, it in here, even if I do light mode, dark mode, it really doesn't change much. Like auto, nope, nothing happened. And the transparency is just broken. And then at this point, I was like, no, let's reboot the system. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. Let's move on. And also the terminal, I opened term and it was kind of broken so yeah i don't know again i do not know what happens so if any of you know what happened please do let me know and i did try the logging and that didn't work so i was at this one checking different types of settings and stuff but again i even disabled the windows effects so it disabled the blur and stuff but again it wasn't working which was unfortunate but at some point i just gave up so now this one is a good terminal i found this one which is weird and there are themes and stuff so i tried that it was weird it was a great experience overall so i opened firefox just to find out how to install stuff in nexus again this is my first time actually uh, taking a look into how to install stuff or even use this system because i have never used it or so i just googled it and hope for the best now i have to do a uh, capture and sometimes i do feel like a robot while doing this so this is a great i would say article like it's false is a really great website for any open source thing or literally anything linux related because they do make really nice articles that really help out whenever we need and i was just found that this website allows us to search for uh, applications even system packages literally everything we may need so i was trying to see if i can install vlc and i just went for the bin version so i just copied it like any professional linux user copied it and pasted it and then i realized this is not supported in this at first i didn't understand again it's a really big wall of text so it's really scary so the bin version did not didn't really work so i thought hmm, if the bin doesn't work maybe the normal one will so i I thought about like going with environment videos. So I, at this point, I was thinking like, hmm, maybe you can do a lot of things with here. But why make your life complicated if you can just simply do a normal one? And I tried it. And this one, uh, if I do Nix Shell, so Nix Shell does allow us to try the app. So this does not actually install the app on our system. And this just allows us to try it out. So now, as you can see, the prompt changed from my user to Nix Shell, which my, if I do search in my like, default home, it won't work. But if I do type it in in the Next shell, it does it does open VLC, so it does work inside of the next shell. Why is it inside of the next shell? If I just quit out of it, just do exit, and then now if I type in VLC, not VLS, VLC, uh, you'll see that it will literally say I have never met this man in my entire life. So let's continue reading. Let's see what else it says. So after scrolling for a bit, I found another website. So another command, and you know what we do? Let's copy the command and not all of it. I just need to copy it from this point, and then if you just add this, paste it in, and this one allows us to query 
or basically the next store and when i did it uh this is the message that i got which is evaluation warning i don't know why but uh it was pretty weird and it did take a bit of time uh, kind of iterating through all of this so that was kind of weird yeah that was kind of weird and it does take again a bit of time to just search for something so that's really bad i would say that. and it did see, it show the output which i didn't see but again as as many times i do do this i thought it was probably the one time thing but it wasn't it was does it multiple times like every time i search so i tried shortening the command and seeing what each of the parts do as soon as i add the a it starts to do, do this so yeah and also without the a it doesn't work as you can see so it is probably some attribute thing probably and again to install it uh, there is another command again man c command man use command but at this point i did understand that uh the env so the command that we are typing right now which is nix env this actually uses it uses the main user so it doesn't install it globally so if you do have multiple users they will not have access to every single application it's just for that specific user but there is also so another command which you will see in a bit which is if we do sudo that installs it global let me first install a program so if i do nv dash ia and then the package we want to install so i want to install nixos.vlc so what i learned from this was that uh, any package i do want to install i just have to put nixos in front of it and almost 90 percent of the time it just works and as you can see i cannot search it here uh, i would have because then i realized that i had to restart my system to get the vlc to show up here but i don't know if it's just a deep in thing or if it's the dxos thing so it's just the thing that i paste so if i do sudo as you can see i read it on the page it, it does install it globally but after even after installing globally i couldn't find it in this menu right here so what i thought that maybe it's hidden somewhere maybe i'm missing something but i couldn't figure it out so what i did is just restart the system so yeah there you go i just typed in the command and it rebooted the system so now as you can see it does show up in the menu that we wanted to show up and i would say that this is basically the adventure i had and i didn't go too deep into this because well uh, now i wanted to install or uninstall at least and see if i can uninstall and at this point i did mistype it and i didn't notice it so i spent a bit of time kind of troubleshooting it but uh, then i realized that i didn't i just didn't put that in i did go to help and stuff but i couldn't figure it out then i realized that okay so uninstall is there so there has to be something that i am missing and I was missing. I was just missing an end. And at this point, I realized that, uh, yep, I even went to Firefox. Like, I literally went to the page just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And apparently, I didn't. I just missed an end. And there you go. I figured it out. <laughs> anyway, so it did it is obviously. But again, it wasn't updating it on the system itself. Again, I couldn't figure it out why. So that was weird. And that was about it. Like, that's about it of my NixOS adventures. I didn't again, go too deep into the system on how it everything worked. I just got a general idea of how things are installed and how they are not installed so and as far as i'm concerned linux configurations should be the same like the configurations themselves shouldn't change much as the installation process is a bit different so that's what i take taken out from this so if you did make our if you did make it this far into the video thank you for watching and sticking around make sure to subscribe to the channel leave a like and after i install fast fit and show you that i did install next at this point i was just trying to find some stuff and this is basically the next OS configuration so in here you can actually add files and add packages to this to install and it's pretty handy it's a pretty handy tool and also this is the thing that allows you to have rollbacks so it just rebuilds the system and and it gives us the option that if something breaks after the rebuild or if some application just misbehaves we can actually just go back to our previous system so at this point i just added uh vlc again yeah obviously i'm a genius Yes, I know. I just added VLC to this, which was already installed and I couldn't get rid of it. But hey, at least now you know how this one works. So now I just did a like it says rebuild. And when I press enter, it might usually it just it shows errors if it does find anything. So before it does anything, it will just check if there are any errors in the configuration file, which is great. Uh you can't really break the system. I won't challenge you guys. Like I know you guys will find a way to break it, but it, it's really difficult to break it. And after it's done, I just did a quick reboot. So sudo re good now there you go and at this point i've realized okay so now we have two versions of the system one from before one from after the rebuild and it's great so there is a rollback option now and that's about it if you did find this video helpful subscribe to the channel leave a like and i'll see you guys in the next one bye